if we consider 0 and 1 as the alphabet sigma, uh, the language of machine M1 is a string with odd number of zeros. Uh, the language of a machine M2 is a string with odd number of ones. Okay, so these two languages are regular because there exist DFAs that recognize both these languages. Okay, so let's take a look at both of these DFAs and see if they are recognizing both those languages. They do. Alright, now let us consider the intersection of these two languages as well as the union of these two languages. So formally, uh, language of M1 intersection of language of M2 is set of all the strings with odd number of zeros and odd number of ones. Similarly, language of M1 union language of M2 is the set of all the strings with odd number of zeros or odd number of ones. If we can come up with DFAs that recognize these two languages, we are a step closer to formally proving regular languages are closed under union and intersection. Meaning, if L1 and L2 are regular languages, then L1 union L2 as well as L1 intersection L2 are regular languages as well. Alright, so let me show you the DFA that accepts the intersection language. Uh, there you go. So you can verify through visual inspection this DFA is going to accept strings that have odd number of zeros and odd number of ones. Similarly, I have a DFA for the union language as well. Uh, it's got like more accept states than the intersection DFA, uh, but pretty much the structure of both these DFAs is the same. In the next part of the lecture, I'm going to show you how to construct uh, this union and intersection DFAs using individual DFAs. For that, let me formally introduce to you delta star. I've discussed about delta star earlier, but here is where I'm defining it formally. Delta star is an upgrade of the standard transition function of a DFA, delta. So delta star takes two input arguments, a state as well as a word and delta star of you know the state and the word is going to give you the state dfa will be in after reading that word i'm going to explain these two points in the inductive definition of delta star using an example so first let's talk about delta star of q comma epsilon okay so at any state if you give that state uh, epsilon which is the empty string it wouldn't go anywhere it will stay at that particular state. Okay, so that's the base case. The inductive step here is delta star of Q comma W A. So W is a word and A is a character from the alphabet. All right, so that can be rewritten as delta of delta star of W comma A. So we'll see this in action using this example. Alright, so let's say I'm starting at Q0 and then I'm feeding the DFA the word ABA. So delta star of Q0 comma ABA equals to, I'll be using the inductive step right there and rewriting it this way. So delta of delta star of Q0 comma AB comma A. Now I can further apply the inductive step on the delta star that we have inside the parenthesis. So I'll end up with delta of delta star of Q0 comma A comma B. I'll apply that again and finally end up with the empty string, uh, you know, inside those parentheses. Now delta star of Q0 comma epsilon from the base case, we know that it's equal to Q0. So I'm gonna write it here. And from now on, all I have to use is the transition function delta. Okay, so delta of Q0 comma A, uh, it goes to Q1. Now delta of Q1 comma B, 
it would go to q2 and then delta of q2 comma a is going to go to q3 we'll be using this inductive definition of delta star while coming up with the dfas for intersection and union languages note that from the definition of delta star we have that w belongs to the language of the machine m if and only if delta star of q0 comma w belongs to the final states set f now let's do formal construction of product of two dfas uh, right here i have machines m1 and m2 and their phi tuple descriptions so m1 and m2 are dfas which are operating on the same alphabet sigma but they have different sets of states q1 and q2 different transition functions delta 1 and delta 2 uh, different start states uh, q01 and q02 and different set of final states f1 and f2 a product automaton of m1 and m2 is an automaton defined as i'm going to name it n so it has set of states qn the alphabet is going to be the same sigma uh, transition function is delta n the start state for uh, the dfa n is actually a pair it's the pair of start states from m1 and m2 and then we have final states uh, f of n now i'm going to go over every individual term in this product automaton starting with qn qn is the uh, states set of states in the dfa n uh, it is defined as the cartesian product of q1 and q2 okay so cartesian product of the states from machine 1 and machine 2 let me explain this using an example that i have here q1 is the set of states p0 and p1 q2 is the set of states q0 and q1 so the set of states in product automaton qn is the cartesian product of q1 and q2 which would give you those four pairs okay so the states in the product automaton are going to have the labels uh, which are those pairs now let's move on to the delta n okay so uh, delta n of p0 comma q0 comma 0 so i have this state i'm going to give the character 0 to it which state would it go to so i can use the expansion that i have here from the definition and i arrive at delta 1 of p0 comma 0 comma delta 2 of q0 comma 0 uh, take a look at uh, machine 1 so you'll see that it will go to p1 take a look at the machine 2 it will go to q0 so we end up with a pair p1 comma q0 similarly let's check the delta n of p1 comma q0 pair with the character 0 so i'm going to expand it uh, and then i'll arrive at this pair so i'm going to mark it in the uh, dfa diagram i have here okay repeating the same stuff with p1 q1 uh, i end up with p0 q1 repeating it with p0 q1 i end up with with p1 q1 perfect so the dfa is almost done we're going to repeat the same procedure uh, when we feed the character one to these state pairs and then we'll end up with these results so i'm going to use these to draw the uh, dfa great now we have everything except the final states in the dfa for n to accept the intersection language of machine m1 and m2 we have to set the final set of states as the cartesian product of f1 and f2 in this example we have only one accept state in m1 and one accept state in m2 so we end up with a pair p1 q1 okay so that will be marked as the accept state so this machine accepts the intersection language of the machine m1 and m2 what if i want to have a machine that accepts the union of the languages of machines m1 and m2 
this is how you would arrive at that machine. All right, let's evaluate the uh, final set of states in the machine that accepts the union language. It's gonna be F1 cross Q2, union Q1 cross F2. So we have F1 cross Q2 uh, with the pairs P1 Q0 and P1 Q1. And Q1 cross F2, we have P1 Q1 and P1 comma Q0. So if you take the union of these two sets, you end up with these three states, which I'm uh, marking as accept states in the TFA N. That TFA indeed accepts the union language of machines M1 and M2. It's the strings with odd number of zeros or odd number of ones. Perfect. I know you're already overloaded with all these symbols and notations, so I'm gonna hold off the proof for this lemma, which involves delta star of the product automaton n. Okay, so we'll discuss this in the class. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if any of this is not clear. See you.